it was Planet Fitness. You know, all things considered, I should have seen this coming. With Encanto's popularity steadily increasing, it should come as no surprise that the ravenous fanbase has started demanding more. And while nothing has been confirmed as of yet, there's certainly a lot of potential for future expansion. Heck, Jared Bush, a writer-director for the film, has already expressed interest in an Encanto series for Disney+, and I think that's an awesome idea. We still got like two-thirds of a family to flesh out here, not to mention tons of burning questions that still need answering. I mean, if Bruno knows what TV is, despite living in a rustic, isolated society that likely doesn't have it yet, does that mean that he foresaw other modern tech as well? Did he see visions of the internet, including all the websites, videos, apps, and domains that we're all aware of today? Is Bruno a search engine? But for real, with Zootopia getting its own full series and even cars at some point in the future, why not throw the Hispanic Incredibles on the list? I'm sure it would make a lot of fans happy, including me. I also thought it would be cool to have a Disneyland attraction featuring the Madrigal's Casita. Like have some cast members appear in character as Alma, Mirabel, and the rest of the family, throwing you a big party and welcoming you to their village? Now that would be an experience. Plus it would be super easy to emulate the house's movements from the film. Doing things like having the shutters wave at you, changing stairs and opening drawers, the Imagineers could do that in their sleep. Did you do that? <laughs> but no matter how they decide to expand on Encanto, I'm sure one thing that all of us would die for is a full tour of the entire house. Yeah, you know what I'm getting at here. Show me them rooms, baby! There are so many rooms in Casita that we still have yet to see, mainly the living spaces of our favorite gifted children. And after checking out the insane imagination on display in the rooms that we did see, my mind is just surging with possibilities of what could be behind the remaining doors. So, how's about we discuss those ideas in great detail? Keep in mind that these are just predictions brought on by my overactive imagination, and if you guys have any ideas for what the remaining Madrigal rooms might look like, feel free to leave a comment below. But for now, let's make some bold assumptions about our favorite family's living conditions. Let us begin. Let's start things off with the obvious question. How does one get to Wu? Well, as we see in the film, when a Madrigal touches the knob of their door for the first time and opens it up, a special customized room is instantly built around them, both literally and metaphorically. This means that the magic is used to perfectly tailor each family member's room around who that person is and likely what they need as well. And we see evidence of this in the few rooms that we did see in the film. Alma's room seems to be an exact copy of the room that she once shared with her beloved Pedro in their old home. Probably as a way of saying that while she does need to carry the burden of her husband's passing through multiple generations, in a way, he'll always be with her no matter what. And if you saw my last video, you'll know how true I think that is. Isabella's room was constantly blooming with beautiful blossoms representing her flower powers, and also her intense need to always stay perfect lest Alma shoots her down for it. Bruno's room is coarse, rough, irritating, and it gets everywhere. Much like this quote. And Antonio's room is the Jungle Book. All if you're in the jungle, why not give me? Now I know that Casita technically did a hard reset at the end of the movie, leaving all the doors up for grabs again, but we can probably assume that most of these characters' rooms will stay the same, even if they have to touch the knobs again. Except Isabella's room will probably have more plants than just flowers on display because of her development, Bruno's room will probably have a fixed vision cave and hopefully an elevator, and Mirabel, well... It's kind of implied that the front door is her door, since she was the one that mended the family, and when she touched the knob, the entire house came back to life, and she's front and center on the door's wood carving, and... Yeah. I don't know, maybe I'll make a separate video talking about Mirabel's potential room, but for now, I'm just gonna go with the implication that the whole house is essentially her room, if that makes any sense. Also, just in case people start asking, we can assume that Felix and Augustine both share a room with their respective wives. So yeah, they're not going to be in this video either. Alright, let's get to the fun stuff. Behind door number one, we have Luisa Madrigal, the beautiful beefcake big sis who felt pressured for years to hold the weight of all the family's problems on her shoulders without completely collapsing. But nowadays she's resting a lot more, which is good, because she definitely deserves to chill. As for her room, well, funny story about that we kind of already know what it is. It was never shown in the movie, yeah, but there's a lot of external material that gives us hints of what it would look like. If you check out the Art of Encanto book, for example, they give us like three possibilities for what Louisa's living space would have been. My favorite one by far is where it seems like she just has a drab, boring, rundown loft that she sleeps in, but under the surface, ah? Uh, 
is actually a huge colorful amusement park where she can secretly have fun and just feel like a kid again. I think it's pretty obvious that Luisa had to grow up much quicker than most of the Madrigals just because of the heaps of responsibility thrust upon her, so having her room be an escapist tool where she can just unleash her inner child and ride Space Mountain 24-7 sounds amazing. There's also this concept where giant boulders are floating right above her with twinkling lights underneath, as if to say, Hey, I know you gotta do a lot of the heavy lifting, but here are some bright sides for you. You make your family happy, you make your town happy, they all love you so much, etc. Definitely fitting, but also kinda nerve-wracking. Like, jeez, Casita, how is someone supposed to sleep with a rock this close to their face? That would put me on edge all night long. There was also the idea of a beach with a bunch of workout equipment, which could totally work as well. Always fun to get swole with the sand between your toes. And now that she's relaxing more, there's no better place to kick back than on a freaking beach. It'd be like your own private version of Moana's Island. Heck, considering that Lin-Manuel Miranda worked on both movies, maybe she'd even get Maui as a spotter. What can I say except 200 more reps till you're done, babe. I know that we have no definitive answer for what Louisa's room would look like, but in my opinion, any of these concepts could make for a solid living space that perfectly fits with their character. Hopefully we'll get to see one of these ideas fully realized in the future. Next up, we have Peppa Madrigal, who makes so many storms per day that meteorologists would struggle to name them all. Yeah, you gotta feel sorry for this woman. Not only is she completely neurotic, but every emotional outburst is accompanied by demolished property and sopping clothes. Peppa, you're a cool character, but I would never want to be in your shoes. Mainly because they'd be soaking wet. With such a double-edged sword of a gift, Peppa would definitely need a room where she could keep this weather under control and just calm her nerves every once in a while. And I think I have the perfect idea. Similar to Bruno's room, which extends upwards to simulate an hourglass full of sand, Peppa's room would also extend upwards to simulate a thermometer. This would be symbolic of her climate-controlling powers and her tendency to get hot-tempered or super-stressed over things. And it would be functional, too. Like, the higher up you go in the room, the warmer it would get, and the lower you go, the cooler it would get. Just like how a thermometer works. How would you even get up so high in the first place? One word. Clouds. The room would be filled with these super fluffy clouds that you could easily stand, sit, or lay down on. They could fly you up to whatever part of the room you want, act as flooring so that you could stand on something, and of course they could rain at will if you ever needed water at any point. When you combine all these things together, you basically have everything a person could possibly need to relax. The perfect temperature for bathing, the perfect temperature for sleeping. You'd never waste water so you could take as long as you need. The clouds would be fluffier than any mattress ever conceived so you'd sleep super soundly. And if you're one of those people who enjoys listening to rain or wind while you drift off, authentic full stereo nature sounds, baby, and you'd stay completely dry. This room would be the ultimate spa, which is something that Peppa could easily use to calm herself down every evening. I just hope that Dolores never needed to sleep in her mom's room when she was younger, cause to her, the gentle sound of rain would probably sound like this. Speaking of which, let's move on to Peppa's oldest kid, Dolores Madrigal, the family's good listener and occasional gossip girl. She's a character that I really like despite her limited screen time. Her design is adorable, I was happy for her when she got the man of her dreams, and that little hmm that she does every time she hears something never gets old. I will say though, her gift is definitely the one I would least like to have. I already have sensitive ears as it is, so I would never get a moment's rest if my hearing was always amplified like that. It's possible that it's just selective hearing that she can control, but if not and her ears are that sensitive 24-7, no thank you. Lucky for her though, my idea for her room is a nice cozy little space with carpeted floors and soundproof walls so she can finally get some shut-eye when she really needs it. However, there is one section of the room near the outermost wall with exposed floorboards, and the true magic comes alive when Dolores steps on these in a specific order. If we look at the Encanto art book again, we can see a few concept sketches of Dolores holding instruments like a guitar or a harp, implying that she might have a thing for music. And this is something that I decided to incorporate into her room's design. You see, these floorboards would creak at such a low octave that only Dolores would be able to hear them. And when she steps on them in specific orders, almost like a secret password, the wall would then open up to reveal a certain musical venue where she could express herself or vent or put her thoughts in a song. Like if she's happy, maybe there's a password for a big band shell full of all kinds of instruments that she could try out, and even rows of seats so she can put on little concerts for her family and friends. 
Heck, maybe the family even performs together on stage sometimes. I mean, we're shown that our Uncle Augustine can play piano, there's art of her father Felix playing guitar, Mirabelle, I guess, can play accordion? And pretty much everyone else in the family can sing, so maybe that's a special way for Dolores to connect with their family through one of her hobbies. That would be adorable. If she was ever stressed or sad, there could be a password for a more small music studio, where she could just play the piano, guitar, violin, or harp, and either let all her tears out, or just calm down after a super tough day. There could even be pictures on the wall that remind her of happier times, so she can try and cheer herself up. And if there was ever a time when she was angry... Giant drum set! Yeah, I know this is never gonna happen, but honestly, seeing Dolores absolutely destroy it on the drums to let off some steam would be the funniest thing ever. I know Dolores doesn't have a ton going for her yet, but if they do decide to go with the music angle, it could make for a super interesting and super personal room that could really strike an emotional chord. For Camila Madrigal, at first I didn't think I'd have much to work with. He's a shape-shifting middle child who's kind of a jokester, and that's it, right? Well, that's what I thought. But then I took a look at his wiki entry, and HOLY COW, LOOK AT ALL THIS INFO! Yeah, it's not hard to see who's the fan favorite here. He was described by the creators, and by his actual voice actor, as a kid who doesn't know who he is yet, and he keeps trying on a bunch of different personas to see what sticks. He's also the family clown, who enjoys making people laugh, and absolutely eats up the attention. Throw in the fact that he's also super athletic, a good singer, and great with kids, and it's obvious that this little tramp was born to be a star. Now that I can work with. Picture this, a gigantic room in the shape of a tornado-like spiral, which is actually a callback to how he was originally going to transform into things. Objects are hovering and floating around at all times. The room is constantly changing, just like him. But that's not all, because each object in the room can also transform into something to suit Camillo's needs. Like a desk can turn into a chair, or a bookshelf can turn into a bed, or a dresser can turn into a... slightly larger dresser. You get the idea. But the truly interesting part of the room rests at the very top of the spiral. Whenever Camillo's friends or family come over to visit, his floating furniture would basically act as express elevators to the room's premier attraction, his own cabana club. Now hear me out. In this little club, Camillo assumes basically every role. He's the host, the waiter, the bartender, the busboy, the chef, assuming his Tia Julieta taught him how to cook, which would be a cute idea, and most importantly, the live entertainment. The type of show would be different every time. One night it could be a magician, another night it could be a singer, or a stand-up comic, or a gymnast, or a jazz musician, the list goes on. This type of feature would reflect his desire to find himself through experimenting with different personas, as well as his craving for attention and passion for entertaining people. It's the whole package. And you could call his club, The Chameleon. Oh, and there would also be a staircase that goes around the room up to the club, so if you want to talk to Camillo and he's mad at you, the floating furniture won't work and he'd make you take the stairs. And the higher up you go, the more stairs you'd have to climb. Oh, and if you're that fat guy from the Bruno song, you gotta take the stairs up no matter what. Sorry dude, you blamed Bruno when you should've blamed all those sweets you were eating. And lastly, we have Julieta Madrigal, and I saved her for last because I honestly have the least to say about her. All we're shown in the movie is that she's a good mother, a good cook, and a level-headed person. That's pretty much it. No extra detail or behind the scenes stuff, what you see is what you get. I still love her, she's a great parent, and I'm glad she didn't die from Disney-itis at any point, but by far she gives me the least creative elbow room out of everyone in the family. But I do have one idea for her room. Behind Julieta's door, I can imagine there being this wide open enclosure of lush farmland, with all the fixings that you would expect. There would be huge fields where Julieta and her loved ones could just take a walk and talk about their problems for a bit, while still being in the privacy of her room. There'd be acres full of all kinds of crops that she would use to make her famous dishes. And if the town was ever hit by famine or drought, or maybe they just need a specific food for a specific occasion, Julieta would have any morsel you could desire at her fingertips. Also, I would love if she had one of those old style outdoor kitchens with the brick or clay stove and a little wooden picnic area. I know the house already has a kitchen and a dining room, but this could be a nice change of pace if the family ever wanted to have an indoor, outdoor meal. What? Again, not a lot to work with here, but a room like this would definitely reflect her nurturing behavior, her cooking skills, her ability to provide for the family, and her very level-headed demeanor. And I'll be honest, out of all the rooms I've talked about so far, this sounds like the one I would most want to visit. I mean, a nice peaceful farm where the magic does most of the work sounds like a pretty good deal to me. 
Overall, I'm not sure when and if we'll get to see everybody's rooms, but the whole magical angle of the film allows for loads of creative possibilities, making it tons of fun to speculate. I've pretty much given my two cents, but what do you guys think? Would you be down to see an Encanto sequel or series at some point in the future? And if so, how would you design the rooms that we haven't seen yet? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in everybody, and I hope to see you all real soon.